Hello and welcome back to the channel. Um, back in the woods this time, so it's been quite a while since I've been up here. Came up on the quad bike and uh, got a bit of a different video for you today. What I thought I'd do is, I've been uh, hammock camping now for about two years I think, and uh, I've got three hammocks. They're all um, kind of high-end hammocks, so they were quite expensive. But I thought it'd be interesting to put them all up at the same time and then just run through what I think is good and what I think is bad. Obviously it's only my own opinion, but um, it's gained from actually using the, the equipment. Um, so first off, there's a piece of oak that I've been meaning to bring my chainsaw up to cut up. So I'll take you over and we'll cut that up first and then we'll come back to the hammocks. sedimentary rock.
So that is a really simple uh, log store. You should keep the majority of the weather off it. Um, and so it'll be nice and dry when I come to use it. So that's one job out of the way. The first hammock of the trio is the Hennessy Explorer Four Season Zip. Now this was my first hammock. Um, I bought it probably two years ago in 2020. Um, I've seen the Hennessy hammocks. I think Ray Mears was using one in the Amazon, um, which what, what, what that's what put me onto them. Um, but uh, he used one. Uh, Hennessy have a system um, on the non-zip ones where you actually climb up through the middle of the hammock. But I didn't fancy that, so I got the zip one. Um, it's quite compact and it's by far the most versatile of the three hammocks. Um, it comes with everything you need. It comes in a stuff sack, comes with your tree straps, um, a rain fly, and it also has the insulated mat um, contained within the hammock. It's, it goes in a pocket that's underneath the hammock. So contained in the bag, you have the rain fly, and you have one end of the hammock and the tree straps are normally kept in the top of the bag but I've uh, put them somewhere else. Now the hammock comes with a choice, you can have a choice of uh, tree straps. There's a seven foot tree strap and there's a three foot tree strap. Um, I happen to have them both. Um, you then need a carabiner and I use these repelling rings because they make life really simple when you're trying to tension the hammock, which I'll show you in a minute. So we'll put some tree straps around the trees and uh, go on from there. I'm actually going to cinch these ones together. So you put, the, uh, put one end through the other and that way it'll stay where we put it when we put it up the tree. It needs to come. quite high, just above my head height. And put the carabiner in. Right. One repelling ring. Two repelling rings. So that's what they do. Now I'll show you what those do. So with the repel rings, you pass it through. Go back through and then through the, the gap. And it just holds it tight whilst you're adjusting things. So to put the fly on, it just clips onto these two clips. There's one here. And there's on a prosic prosic nut knot. In fact, I won't bother putting the fly sheet on just yet. Let's show you the hammock. So, under here is where the foam pad is. So it's actually in a little pocket underneath the hammock, which is quite nice. And then you have the, the main hammock fly sheet. That uh, will go down a little bit, but <laughs> needs to be a bit tighter. <laughs> See if that works. Mm. 
well it's better but a bit tighter I think and it's an asymmetric one so you kind of lie diagonally across it which makes life a whole lot more comfortable and the mat is actually in the same asymmetric direction that you lie in so there you go that's the Hennessy hammock. You also have this little uh, bag up here for putting occasionals in like your phone or your keys uh, if you've got any change in your pockets and there are little hooks as well so you can hang a light lantern up. That makes life a little bit easier. There you go, and you also have these going out points, so you can pull it out, which just then pulls the uh, opens the hammock up, so that when you're using it, it's nice and uh, nice and free and open. This little specimen is the Haven hammock. Now it's a lie flat hammock, but uh, it's in the same orientation as the Hennessy hammock. So we'll go ahead and put that up and then you can have a look at that. It comes in this nice little uh, arrangement where it's all packed together. Um, so we undo the two clips. And this bit is the inflatable mat. So we'll pop that to the side for the minute. And this one is the main event. Now it does come with tree straps um, and they're a bit different to the Hennessy ones because they've got loads of loops so that uh, you can really decide how tight you want it around the tree and they're also quite long so we'll go ahead and put those on. Now these want to be just above my head height so just over six feet. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the tree a couple of times because the um, these two trees aren't too far apart, so I can't have it too slack. Uh -huh, all right. So that's that one. Now the Haven hammock has an interesting uh, fly sheet attachment. It attaches through the main carabiner. So this thing here is the fly sheet and this is your main carabiner. And that in there, the white thing, is the actual ridge line for the hammock. So we'll attach this end and attach it a bit further up actually. Maybe there. And then we unfold the hammock and attach it to this end. So I've attached it to on the, on the left hand side to a thinner tree uh, which is a slightly further, it's about another three or four feet further away and it just fits but it's very tight as you can see. So that's the main hammock body up. Uh, what we'll do is we'll flip the fly sheet over and then it's got some spreader poles which go into it. Yeah. 
Now the spreader poles, what they do is they open out the two ends um, and they do it above where the mattress goes. So you put these spreader poles in. I'll try and show you how they go in. They're little pockets in the ends. I'm not sure it's going to be very easy to show you, but uh, we'll have a go. So this is the pocket. So it just fits there. I don't know if you can see my finger in it. So we put that inside, and there's a corresponding one on the other side. So we put the far side in first. So the pole goes in there. That pushes over there. And then this side goes in to this pocket. Like that. And that has the effect of opening up the hammock. And then once we put the mattress inside, then it will be completely opened up. So I pop the spreader pole in the other end. It's always a good idea to pack these things away properly so that everything is contained. Because the last thing you want to do is arrive at your camping area and find that you've forgotten your spreader poles because this tent, this hammock would be useless without them. Okay, so that's the basic hammock. So what we'll do now is we'll pump up the mat and uh, pop that in. Now, my weapon of choice for pumping these things up, most of these mats, is so the little flex, flex tail gear pump. Um, and it's also it's a good idea to lay the mat over the top of the ridge line because you don't want it dragging in the dirt. These things are expensive um, and you don't want them punctured. So just leave that to do its thing. Now these mats are also very well insulated. I think this has an R value of about four and a half or five. Um, and I think the Amok is certainly over five, five, or five or over five. Also worth noting that the bag that the um, mat comes in is also an inflation bag so it has a little valve on the bottom so you just waft it in the air and then uh, you, you can pump up the mat like that. I tend to use the bag just to uh, to top the pressure off because uh, the pump doesn't do it as high as it needs to be. So you just attach that on. And you kind of waft air into this. And then as you squash down on it, so it pumps the mat up. That should do it. And there are some little uh, pockets in the corners that the mat just hooks underneath. Like that. In each of the corners, and that just holds the mat steady. Give it a try. Now the beauty of this one is it's a lay flat hammock. So you don't get the, you get a little bit of uh, depression in the middle, but it's actually really comfortable. Although I think I've got the head end a little bit too low. So I think I'm gonna to have to lift the head end up but it's a really exceptionally comfortable hammock to sleep in. In fact, I might just drop this side down a little bit. Yeah, that's better. Absolutely fantastic, these things.
and as you can see it's hopping it again the sides don't crush you in so you're just kind of lying flat and these ones you can actually lie on your side or on your back I won't do it at the moment because I've got a multi-tool and some carabiners and I want to puncture them out but uh, you can have a really really comfortable sleep in this so that's the haven hammock <clears throat> on with the show this is the Amok hammock it's the Amok Drowmoor 5 um, it is my personal favourite um, it's a very well designed hammock not that the other two aren't because obviously we're, we're up at the top end of the market with these hammocks um, they come with some tree straps the tree straps on these are a bit different because they don't use carabiners they use these little uh, triangular hooks which attach to the, uh, the hammock and then you can adjust it so if we put the tree straps around the tree, then we can get on with it. They also come with a, a very nice little nylon, uh, Velcro fastener which is attached, which is a very nice little uh, trick. So I like the other tree straps. And let's go under that one. On the ends of the hammock you have a red end and a green end and believe it or not they uh, hark back to the maritime um, industry because you have red which is port and green which is starboard and if you have the port on your left it means that wh whichever way you're facing that's the way that the hammock will open um, and that's the way you'll get in and out and it'll be facing that way so we'll put the left side on first so you have a triangular bit and you have a, an eyelet and the triangle faces the tree so you put the triangle through and then you can tension it So that's pretty much the amok up. Um, now there are a few other things you have to do with this. On the foot and the head end you insert these little pole things which just spread the material so it gives you a decent foot box and a head box so that everything isn't just um, gathering around your feet and your head. Now with this one again, it's a lay flat, but it runs, the, the, um, the hammock is actually, you're lying at 90 degrees to the ridge line. Um, and because it's a lay flat one, it has to have an inflatable mat in it. I'll go and get the inflatable mat and we'll pump that up. Now very similarly to the Haven, this one comes with an inflation sack as well. Um, but I'm going to use the little flex, ga flex tail gate. Sorry, flex tail gear pump. So again, we put the mat over the ridge line. We don't. These are expensive. They're about 200, 200 pounds, something like that, because it's a very well insulated mat. So the last thing you want to be doing is dragging it around on the mud and the sticks and the stones and stuff.
So we'll just let that pump up. So we've got the mat pumped up now. Now it's important that the mat goes in with the valve to the towards the head end um, because there's a little cutaway. There's a little zip pocket. I don't know if you can see it in here where the mat goes. I'll just move that back a little bit. So it goes in through this pocket here. Put it in there. See it's taking shape here. The bottom just tucks in. Like that. Oh, look up. You don't have to have the bug net on because you can unzip it all the way round and it goes, it folds up in there. Um, in fact, we'll do that now. It's a lot easier to show you getting in and out of it. That all jumps over here. And it just falls up in there. And that is the mock hammock. Now, one of the things about these hammocks is that they are not the easiest to get in and out of um, when you first start trying. Um, they do get easier because there are various knacks that people use to, to get in and out of them. Let the fun commence. When I first got this, I tried to get into it and I ended up on the floor um, probably five or six times. So the way that they tell you to get into it is you grab hold of the side strips like that and then you kind of lower yourself into it like that. So it does work. Um, now the nice thing about this one is it has a chair mode so you can kind of sit up which is quite nice oh. so that is the Amok Drowmoor 5 now I haven't put the uh, um, the fly sheet up yet but I will do because I'm probably going to sleep in this one tonight um, and I'll definitely be deploying the bug net. Um, there are a few things in here. You've got, um, where do we start? There is a little uh, net bag which it's in the middle of the fly sheet and the fly sheet goes over the top of the ridge. You have a pocket over here. I don't know whether you can see. Yeah, you can see. There's a pocket over here which you can put your shoes in if you want, or you can put other stuff in. Um, there's a little uh, drinks holder which does fit an algae bottle, or if you prefer it will fit a beer can. Um, there are little pockets here and here so that you can put uh, your phone or your whatever in them. Um, what else? Um, you, the, the, these things here, the supports, um, you, I, I usually tuck a book down under there when I, when I come to bed early and uh, have a read. Um, you can also lift the legs up so that then it goes into a proper chair position. Um, now, one thing you might think that because it's in a chair position, wouldn't it be nice to have your morning coffee in it? Forget it. Um, I don't think you'll be able to get into it with a cup of coffee because it as you saw earlier it's it is quite awkward to get into um, 
I have tried it, but the only way I can think of doing it is to have a small table up here so that I can just reach over and grab the cup of tea because you can't actually take it in with you. But yes, you can put it in chair mode, you can put it in lay flat mode. Um, very comfortable indeed. Uh, again, with the Haven, that's a very comfortable hammock as well. Um, but there is one gripe I've got with the Haven. Um, the fly sheet, with the, with the Hennessy and this one, the fly sheet is quite big. And so it goes you know, way past the ends of the hammock. But the uh, Haven doesn't. And so if you want to, it's got some little pegs down at the bottom so you can close it off. But then it acts very much like a single wall tent. So it gets a lot of condensation in it. Um, but when you lift it up, then there is a, an opportunity for any rain that's coming from kind of an angle to come in, which I don't like. Whereas this one and the Hennessy, um, they, don't, they don't do that because there's so much more tarp the other sides of it. Um, but that's really the only thing I can think of with the, the, Hennessy, uh, the Haven that I'm not keen on. Uh, with this thing, the, the only thing that, again, is that it's, it's a little bit awkward to get in and out of. It's just starting to rain. So I might put the fly sheet up. Um, in fact, I will put the fly sheet up. Another little thing with the fly sheet on the uh, amok, you get a little uh, carabiner, a green one for the green end, and obviously a red one for the red end. So you just attach those around the tree. And I should find a corresponding red one. There it is. So there's the red one. So the red one goes up on the other side. And you just wrap it around the tree and hook it on. And then they have a, a tensioning system on the actual guy. So you just pull it. And it brings it nice and tight. Do that. Exactly the same up this end. And that's the fly sheet. Up. Now I'm just going to tuck it over the uh, back of the hammock. Now with this one, what I've found is it's best to use some sticks to uh, peg the fly sheet out, which I'm going to do and I'll show you. So there you have the uh, Amok hammock deployed. Because of the way the hammock sits, it's currently just resting on the fly sheet at the moment. So you can see up the top there. But as soon as you put something in it, then it wants to do that. Um, and as soon as you try and get in, as you saw, the hammock slopes down. Well, if you put a sleeping bag in, then the sleeping bag tends to fly straight down to the bottom. And because the point of balance, there's a kind of a sweet spot with this hammock, and the point of balance um, is quite small, and the material that uh, you're lying on is quite slippery. Now, I couldn't find a way of getting into a sleeping bag. That doesn't mean you can't do it, but it's not easy. Um, and I moved over to using a sleeping quilt. I've got an enlightened equipment quilt. And I'll be honest, I wouldn't go back to a sleeping bag after, the, after using that. Um, it is exceptionally easy to use in a hammock, in a tent, doesn't matter. Um, when I'm in a tent, I'm using a Thermarest 
um, mat which is insulated. When I'm in the hammocks, I'm using the, the hammocks have insulated mats, so I don't need anything underneath me. Um, and the quilt is so easy to use. Uh, something else that I thought of, which was that when you're wild camping, um, being kind of trussed up in a sleeping bag means that you can't immediately react quickly to any given circumstance. Um, and so I'd much prefer the sleeping quilt because you can immediately get your arms out. There's nothing holding you back. But uh, aside of that, these are my three hammocks. Um, and they are, as I said at the beginning, they are the top of the tree. I think they're the best hammocks you can buy. Um, and they certainly give you the level of comfort that you would expect from something like that. Now the Amok fly sheet is nice and tight. When you put the uh, Hennessy one up, that's nice and tight as well. The Haven tends to be a bit saggy until you get in it. And when you get in it, then it kind of stretches out and um, fills up all of the gaps and stuff. Um, it does have also a neat little togging system down in the corners so that you can either have your fly sheet so you can hold it out like this. In fact, it's not too bad, is it? I was, I was moaning about the uh, distance between here and there, but that, that seems okay. So yeah, some guy lines out like that. Get rid of the uh, condensation issue. But you can seal it up. Maybe this is to uh, when you leave it, so that you can just seal it all up and uh, nothing can get in. Which it seems to do quite nicely. So yes, very comfortable, very practical, and all three of them do exactly what they're supposed to do. They're all insulated, they're all four season. Um, as regards cost, the cheapest one is the Hennessy. Um, I think that was just under £300. Next up is the Haven, which is 300 and I think £320, £340, that's the XL one, so that's the bigger one. And the Drauma is the, uh, the eye-watering, that's just about £500, that one. But you get what you pay for, um, and I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be without that one. That is the Amok hammock, fully deployed. Um, I'm going to sleep in that tonight. And uh, I've got the most expensive gear hide <laughs> ever. So all my, my gear is going in the uh, Haven hammock. And if I stay out tomorrow night, then I'll swap over and I'll put the gear in the Amok and sleep in the Haven. But uh, uh, we'll see about that. Now I've got a new piece of kit, as you can see. Um, I have been making do with um, kind of pretty much off the peg cold boxes, which are never very good. Um, and uh, I saw these ones, uh, it's a Petromax one, it's the 25 litre one and it, it looks quite big but when you open it up it's actually not very big, um, there's not much space in it but the benefit of this one is that it keeps things, keeps ice cold for, it says 12 days so um, it means that I can bring things out camping that uh, I otherwise couldn't and it also means that I can stay out for a bit longer as well um, and still be able to have um, things kept cold so I can keep fresh meat and, and cheese and milk and so on um, and I can also keep my coke cold. Um, you may have noticed that uh, it's Coca-Cola, it's not beer. I um, decided that I was going to stop drinking for a little while. And uh, stopped about three weeks ago, I think. Um, feeling fantastic. No more lethargy, which is quite nice. So, uh, yes. So that's my new toy for this week. Now, for supper this evening, I'm going a bit off-piste. Um, there's a, a Japanese curry 
or it's a curry, a, a block of curry powder paste. I don't know what you call it. Um, I think it's called a kitsu curry. It's very similar to the ones that you get in the Chinese takeaway or the way, the way that they used to be because they seem to have changed over the last five or ten years. Um, they used to be really tasty, but they seem to be a bit, uh, I don't know, a bit thin and watery now. But these ones are really good. Um, I'll show you the packet that they come in. So they're called a golden curry, um, and it's like it's, it's blocks of uh, that, that you dissolve in water. And once you bring it to the boil, there's obviously some sort of thickener, whether it's monosodium glutamate or something else, I don't know. Um, but uh, once you boil it, it, uh, it thickens nicely up. So uh, I've got some, uh, some red peppers, uh, bell pepper, some mushrooms and some onions and some chicken. Um, so I'm going to fry all of that off a bit later. And then I've got some... Uh, rice which is just one of these in the bag jobs so I'll, uh, I'll boil some water and uh, heat that up and we'll have a, a Japanese curry this is a katsu curry k-a-t-s-u katsu curry um, and I've got the hot one because uh, it's nice even though it's I'm sweltering at the moment after putting uh, cutting all that wood up and putting those hammocks up um, I'm dripping, but uh, yeah, this is I, I really enjoy these. So, um, and it's it should be dead simple to uh, to do. Well, it's going to be dead simple to do on the on the fire. Now I can do it on a gas cooker, um, and I might well do that. I don't know. Um, it's very dry at the moment, and so having a fire, yeah, you can. But I might just do it on the gas stove just for safety's sake. Um, now, the other thing is, when I'm doing one of these curries, I always put a stock cube in. I don't know whether you can see it at the bottom of the bag there. Uh, it's a callow one. It's a veg vegetable one. I normally use a chicken one, but I couldn't find one. Um, so, uh, yeah, put one of those in, and it just it, it adds a lot to it. So, yeah, well, I'll, I'll do that later, and uh, you can have a look at it. In the meantime, I'm just going to have a, a nice ice-cold Coca-Cola. Cheers. Oh, lovely. And it's nice that it's cold as well. This is something I bought uh, before we went to Cornwall, and I, I didn't actually use it on camera. It's a... Uh, Another natty little fire pit. Well, I'll say pit. Fire stand. I have seen other people use these on YouTube and it was really cheap. I think it was about £10. Insert the feet in one end and the other in the other end. Sorry, you might not have seen this. So you insert the feet in one end and then these bits in the other end. And you end up with that. Which you... Put it out a bit like that. And this thing just hooks in the ends of the tubes. And these wire things. And it does a really good job of not letting the ash and stuff come out the bottom so the ash just sits in this stainless steel mesh um, great piece of kit so I might uh, I might have a little uh, a little campfire for my ambiance a bit later 
like I said, it's a very simple tea today. Um, so I'm going to use a jet boil with the pan stand. Bit of oil. There's now time for the other bits to go in. Maybe too many here actually. Right, you can see that the everything's reduced down a lot. And I don't want it to be stodgy. Um, now, I always cook my chicken first, for obvious reasons, but I do think that the making the curry sauce itself, not with all of everything else there, is a better idea. 500, so at uh, 500. And that'll be enough. I don't know whether you were able to see it earlier, but that's what it is. Um, and this came from Sainsbury's, I believe. Uh, you can buy it off Amazon in large things. They do it in kilo blocks. And basically it looks like that. And when you turn it over, it's in kind of cubey bits. So I'm going to use three cubes for my half litre of water. And I'm going to use the whole stock cube. Some of these callow ones. Organic. And put the rest of the curry back into the uh, cold pot to turn it home. And then it's just basically a case of warming, getting the water warm, dissolving the blocks, and then chucking it all back together in a pan. Okay, so we'll go back in with uh, everything else. This will thicken it up a bit as well. Well, I'm comfortable that that's ready. Bon appétit. Mm -hmm. It's just brilliant every time this. I love it. Mm. Lovely. I'll come back to you in a minute. I'll just take the opportunity to uh, make up my bed because the <clears throat> these down quilts they need or down sleeping bags or quilts they need to have a bit of loft in them now what I found with the uh, these 
is if I tuck them behind here, then when I'm ready to go to bed, I can get in, they don't fall down. So there you go. Um, I've also got a sea to summit pillow, but uh, I'm using that an, as a lumbar support at the moment, so uh, I'll bring that later. I think what I'm going to do now is, I've done my washing up, and I've got uh, my fire pit all set up. I think I'm going to light that. And these are all of these shavings. These are green, but uh, I thought I'd burn them anyway. Everything's nice and dry now, so you don't have to really worry too much. <laughs> it does change things, having a little fire, even a small one like this. Makes it so much nicer. Well, it's getting on for about quarter past half past ten now, so uh, I'm going to hit the hay and uh, I'll see you in the morning. Good night. Good morning, everyone. I'd forgotten quite how comfortable that mock hammock is. I, I think I've used it for about three or four months. Um, absolutely fantastic. I think I went to bed at about, about quarter past ten and... Uh, I probably got to sleep at about 11, 11.15, something like that. And I slept straight through till 6, 6.30, something like that. And then I just lay in bed for a couple of hours, listening to the birds. Fantastic, absolutely lovely. Um, so I'm going, I'm going to do, <laughs> do something now I don't normally do, because I only usually eat once a day, but... Uh, I've been carrying a, um, a, a one of these sachet meals, um, sausages and beans. I've been carrying it around for about, it must be at least 10 trips, and I've been meaning to, to use it and haven't. So I'm going to use that. I think it's a Wayfarer one. Uh, so I'm going to heat that up in a minute um, and uh, see how that tastes. But uh, definitely just going to uh, get the kettle on and have a lovely cup of coffee. Mm. Cheers, good morning. So this is the, uh, the one that I've been carrying around forever. Um, so I'm going to heat it up and see what it tastes like. No, it's hot. Time to try it.
frankfurters and beans for breakfast. They're very sweet as well. Still, I don't have to carry them around now. Thank you very much for watching the video. Um, we're all squared away now, so um, just got to load everything back onto the quad bike and then off. But uh, I really hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Bye bye.